What is electrical treeing? Electrical treeing is a partial discharge that creeps or further, further grows into a solid insulation material. And um, it usually creates multiple branches in order to reach out and it grows further, further, further and further. And uh, when I was in university, I was allowed to do a certain experiment. And um, this is how it looked like. Um, here are some photos how this looks like. Okay, so what did we do here? Well, we actually had um, high voltage, we put a nail here, and we had a piece of acryl glass, something like that. And the acryl glass was a little bit like this, and obviously it was, or it is, three-dimensional, and we had a hole drilled in here, right? Looked a little bit like that and we put the nail in. And then we put something, I, I remember correctly, something between 40 and 45 kV in there. And now we hoped for electrical treating to start. And it didn't. And the reason is, um, very often in order to have partial discharges starting, we need air. That's a funny thing. Um, if we want to explain how partial discharges start, most of our theories start with there is a small air in front of our um, electrode. Otherwise, it is really hard to explain how partial discharges are supposed to start um, in, in solid or liquid insulation system. Once there is air and once the first breakdown happens, then the whole thing starts and usually um, accelerates. So, what our professors told us is, use a hammer and hit it. So, and as soon as we hit it with a hammer, we created a little crack in here. And this crack obviously was filled with air. And what happened afterwards? Well, we were able to check um, the, 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 the creation of this electrical tree took a couple of days, maybe a week or something like that. So what happens is you got the first discharge here and the first one here and here and here. And as it kept growing, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and longer and longer and longer. And all of them have these little branches, as you can see in this photo again. So it kept growing, growing and growing. And if you would have not stopped it, it probably would have gotten bigger, bigger and bigger and more and more and more branches. In our case, what happened, it actually was able to hit the outer surface or over here, you know. So the partial discharges, I mean, it's three dimensional, this tree, right? And um, they were actually able to come out and they created a little vent and then we had more and more partial discharges on that vent and at a certain point in time we just realized, okay, um, now I have to wait for much, much longer time in order to grow. But what happens most of the time is that the majority of the partial discharge will actually happen on the very branch that is vented out because you don't have a, um, a buildup of pressure. And this has something to do uh, with the ionization process. There's a video for that, but we're not getting the nitty and gritty here. Um, sometimes electrical treeing, sometimes you call it an electrical tree and sometimes abbreviated to ET. And where is it the most important thing? In cables. So if you have a cable, and this would be our inside con conductor, usually on the inside conductor you have a semiconductive layer on here, and this one would be our outer semiconductive layer. Here in the middle we have an insulation system. What happens is um, either from one side very often the electrical tree might start and it looks more or less the same as you have seen before um, or it grows from the inside to the outside more and more branches. Um, we also have something which is called water trees and for a long time people thought that water trees fell cable. Water trees, from my perspective, and there's a paper about it, they don't fill cables by themselves. What happens if, if you have water ingress, it can come from the inside or from the outside, and you have a, you have a, like a, a water tree going here, usually it doesn't have so many branches. What happens is the electrical field will change. And if the electrical field changes, obviously we're going to have areas where we have less electrical field and we have areas where we have more electrical field. And since they are changing, we are going to reach a point where the electrical tree, uh, the electrical field is above critical, 
we have a video talking about electric field critical, and then we can have um, electrical treeing. So there are pictures out there where you start with a water tree, and the water tree looks a little bit like this. It is uh, not so easy to see. Um, and then we know that our electrical field lines change, right? So normally our electrical field lines would be more or less, I think, I'm not so good in drawing, but uh, you know what, what I'm trying to get. So they would be, um, they would be more or less homogeneous in, in a radial sense of view. But if you have something like this, we might get a concentration of electrical field lines. And then, obviously, we... I do not really know how the electric field lines look here, but they will look different. And here, obviously, I was drawing something which I would consider it to be an... Um, uh, concentration of electrical field lines, and then posh, and then the electric tree could start. So I have seen photos where you see a water tree, and then obviously here it starts, and then the electrical tree grows in both directions. Unfortunately, I don't have the rights for the photos, so I can't put it here. You know, copyright. But uh, electrical treeing can destroy cables, medium voltage cables, high voltage cables, and water trees can help to change the electrical field in a way that this would be a good starting point for the electrical tree to start. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.